Since I have started my channel, I have received a few emails from people in South Africa asking me to look into what is happening in the farmlands over there. And what I found is that from 1996 to 2017, there have been 1,683 murders on those farmlands and a staggering 11,784 attacks. Needless to say, I began to look at some individual cases and what I read horrified me. The levels of brutality in these farm murders is beyond disturbing. Before we start, I just want to say a big thank you to Wicked Clothes for sponsoring another video. A lot of true crime and horror channels get demonetized, so these sponsors are vital if you enjoy this kind of content. And if you haven't heard of them, Wicked Clothes are a company who specialize in creepy and funny clothing, and they honestly make some of the best designs I've seen, and I'm sure you'll agree too. The first one I'll show you are these Mothman t-shirts and sweatshirts. I'm a big fan of these ones. And the Serial Killer documentary and chill is quite possibly one of my favourite sweatshirt designs of all time. So definitely check out that one because that one's so cool. And this week they have also dropped a new pin collection, which I'm sure most of you will probably like. And they feature three of my favourite designs which are Be Nice to Dogs, Serial Killer Documentaries and Chill, and The Mothman. So what I'll do, I'll put a link to the website in the description and in the comments too. And if you click that link, you get an automatic 10% off at the checkout. Or you can use Disturban in the coupon section too. So please guys, check them out because they help the channel so much. And if you do decide to buy something, it helps me out and you also get some cool stuff too, so everyone's a winner. And now, on to the video. This particular case takes place on the 1st of October 2020 on De Rutt's farm in Paul Roo, South Africa. A 21-year-old man named Brandon Horner woke up with a spring in his step that day. It was his first year anniversary working on the farm with the Schweeps family. Brendan was known as a hard worker on the farm and took huge pride in his work. Brendan and his father were colleagues on the farm, but Brendan worked more on the technical side of things as the manager of the farm. Brendan didn't earn too much money from the work that he did, and he wasn't a wealthy man. But he just wanted a simple, normal life and to do some honest work. On this day, at around 6pm, the Schweeps met with Brendan before something truly awful happened. They gave him a handshake and thanked him for his hard work over the last year. Brandon told them that he was going to go visit his father on a neighbouring farm to help him fix his car. Brendan was the kind of person who was always happy to help somebody in need. So, he went over to see his father and helped him fix the car, and after he was done, he went on his way. But, this would be the last time he would ever see his son. Brandon never made it home. By the end of the day, his girlfriend quickly became concerned as he wasn't answering his phone either. This was very out of character. So, she reported him missing to the authorities at around 10pm. A search soon began to find Brendan, and they searched all the way through the night, hoping to find their beloved son alive and well. But, as the sun began to rise on the 2nd of October, Brendan's father Robbie found his son's lifeless body. He had been tied to a post with a rope around his neck, with extremely disturbing injuries. He was only metres away from the gate where he lived with his girlfriend. Whoever had done this had stabbed Brendan in the head and his face. There were also multiple stab wounds all over his body, in his hands, shoulders, arms and legs. Brendan had injuries consistent with strangulation too. And it appeared that whoever had done this to him had also tortured him. When the investigators examined Brendan's body, they saw that he didn't go down without a fight. He had bruising on his fists that showed that he had thrown and landed some punches on the attacker, or attackers. He had also scrape marks on his body that looked like he had been dragged along the ground in a fight. But unfortunately, the attackers had weapons. After they killed and tortured this poor man, they stole his truck and drove away. 
An investigation into the violent murder of Brendan soon began in hopes to find the suspects who committed this disturbing crime. The autopsy conducted on his body showed that it was the strangulation that actually killed him. The next morning, Brendan's Toyota pickup truck was found 15 kilometers away. The inside of the truck was covered in bloodstains. The morning after the murder, witnesses noticed three men with bloodstained clothing coming from the approximate direction of where Brendan was killed. It wasn't long before the police found the people they believed they were looking for. On the 3rd of October, the police arrested two suspects. Sakwenje Malamba, who was a man aged 32. Sokola Mataletsa, who was a 44 year old man. And I couldn't find any information about a third person. The police raided their homes and seized the clothing that were covered in human blood and they sent them off for forensic tests. These men were accused of killing Brendan almost six months ago, but due to problems with the DNA and forensic results, the trial has been delayed a couple of times and it is due to take place on the 13th of May 2021. Both of these men have pleaded not guilty so far and both claim to have alibis from their partners. Although, Malamba's girlfriend admitted during the bail application that she woke up in the middle of the night to discover that he had gone, and he did not return until the following morning. Whilst the other suspect's wife gave a statement to the police saying that he was with her the entire night. Matalesta was known to the law enforcement and had a long list of previous convictions. He was released on bail as there didn't seem to be much evidence to build a strong case against him. But pretty soon he was arrested again on an unrelated stock theft charge. The current theory is that these two men are stock thieves and that things turned ugly after Brendan saw the men trying to steal from the farm and that he went over to go and confront them. One thing that always gets me when covering cases like this is their parents seeing the bodies of the children after such a horrific murder. It's something no one should ever have to experience. The owners of the farm that he worked at made a statement about him. They said he was a wonderful person and no one can even say a bad thing about him. He was well mannered and a hard working person. Our other workers loved him dearly and they broke down in tears last week when they heard about his death. He was a gentleman. His bosses were so desperate to find justice for this poor young man that they hired a private investigator and put up a reward of 50,000 rand to help him find the person responsible. From the statements that I've read from people online is that his death has left a huge void in people's lives. Some people believe that the attack on Brendan was racially motivated and a form of terrorism. And some people believe that these two men were stock thieves and like I said before that Brandon just tried to stop them and some people believe it's a mixture of both. Whatever the motive is it's deeply saddening that this man lost his life in such a brutal and disturbing way. I will be sharing updates on this case on my community page when the trial goes ahead. Some of the attacks that take place in the farms in South Africa are so gruesome and deeply disturbing that they honestly made me feel sick to my stomach. This one is fairly tame compared to the others that I have read about. Some involve babies, infants and children and I have wondered if some of them are just too much to talk about. But I do plan on covering more of these cases in the future. During the South Africa's lockdown, attacks and murders on farmers has increased over the full year of 2020. A lot of the farmers have claimed that they have had no help or protection from the government and they say that they don't really seem to care about the attacks and if anything they seem to just cover them up to make it seem like less of an issue to the outside world. In fact things are so bad at the moment in South Africa that there is a company founded by some women who go by the name of the Blood Sisters and they specialize in murder cleanups but specifically farm murder cleanups. When they started it was just the two sisters doing all the work but the demand for their services has increased to the point where they now have several franchises all over South Africa. 
I am currently in the process of trying to get them on for an interview on the channel, as I can imagine they have quite a few disturbing stories to share.